Got a couple of new cruises lined up for 2024. We're going to talk about that, plus a little bit of news and your comments coming up right now. I'm Chris Dickman, president of CruiseReport.com. And uh, just to give you a little bit of background, not going to spend a lot of time on this, but uh, we've been cruise travel journalists for over 20 years. And uh, during that time, we've been on 144 different cruise ships, 40, I see I've got it written down here, 43 cruise lines, I forget. You know, it gets to be to the point where you forget. And 115 different ships. And we've done everything from oceans and rivers, canals, lakes, uh, luxury ships, river boats, you name it. We've done a wide variety of different ships, and uh, we enjoy all different types of cruising. I cruise with my girlfriend, Ricky. We're adult couple cruising together. We don't have kids, so we don't travel with kids. So if you're looking for a channel that gives you tips and information on how to travel with kids, uh, this isn't the place. But if you're a mature adult couple, and you love cruising, uh, maybe you'll get some benefit out of the things that we talk about here on Cruise Report. I haven't put out a video in a while because it's been pretty quiet around here. We've taken some time off after the holidays, and quite frankly, it's been a little difficult getting on cruise ships. You know, they're full. I've had several messages recently from some of you that have said, hey, we haven't heard from you in a while. What's going on? Are you okay? Thank you for that. I appreciate the concern. Yes, we're fine. I've been uh, in the planning process of getting things set up for our next round of cruises and reviews and content. So let me just tell you what we have going on right now. I've got my coffee here. Uh, I've got my computer with some of your comments that you've posted to my YouTube channel. They, some of them may have come from Facebook. Sometimes they come from emails that you send us, uh, and I'll try to address these, answer the questions if I can, as best I can. In the month of March, we tried, we had actually, we had a cruise scheduled for March on Swan Hellenic, which is a small ship expedition ship cruise line. And they had uh, invited us to, I think we were going to fly into Peru and then uh, sail up the coast of South America to Panama City and get off fly home. And we were planned, we were scheduled, that was all booked, I mean, scheduled and confirmed and more or less confirmed, ready to go. We got our airfare, which we uh, paid for our own airfare. And we were preparing to get our hotels lined up when we heard just a few days ago that that particular sailing had been canceled due to some concerns over violence, I think, in Ecuador. Maybe some of the cartels. I didn't even know there were cartels in Ecuador, but apparently there are. And apparently there's quite a bit of uh, unrest right now. And even though we weren't planning on this itinerary to stop in Ecuador, I think maybe we were going to be sailing through those waters and they may be concerned over pirates or who knows. Uh, nevertheless, the cruise line made the decision to cancel that particular sailing. And I think they were absolutely correct to do so. So we have now been able to rebook on another sailing with Swan Hellenic on their newest ship, the SH Diana, which is an expedition ship. I think it holds about 140 people, and it's a little bit larger than their ship that I did a mini review on a while back called SH Vega. It was a new ship at the time. And I had been invited on board that ship for just, I think, a two-night like a media preview cruise. And I don't do thorough reviews on a two-day trip because there's just not enough time. You can't really get the feeling, the experience of what a, a normal passenger would get on a normal cruise because it was all media people on board. I never know if the meals we're getting are different from what paying passengers get. 
Uh, I'm not able to determine, you know, I just don't know if, if what I report back to you is accurate as to what you can expect to have. So we much prefer to be on a regular scheduled sailing with paying passengers. And trust me, the people on board the ship, they have no idea that we're media. They have no idea that, you know, that we have a YouTube channel in most cases, unless they just by some stretch happen to recognize us, which is very rare. So we don't get special cookies in the room because we get on board or anything like that. But nevertheless, we we so we're basically sailing as far as the crew knows, we're sailing just as any other guest would. We are on a I believe it is a 10 I believe it's a 10 or 11 night sailing out of South America. I believe it's around April the 20th. I think we fly down the day before, spend a night in a hotel, a pre-cruise night, we'll, and we'll be blogging from the ship. We'll be doing videos from the ship, if the internet will allow it. Uh, if not, we'll be shooting video, and we'll edit everything together and get it up as soon as we can onto the YouTube channel. We'll also be posting little short videos to our Instagram account. So if you have not subscribed to us yet on YouTube, please do so now. Click that subscribe button down below. Don't forget the notification bell. That's important important because that way the next time you go to YouTube if we have a new video posted it will let you know it it's not like they're going to send you an email or bother you but if you do go into YouTube it will show up as one of your recommended videos and so we encourage you to do that and also if you end up liking this video do me a favor and give it a thumbs up that really does help with our YouTube rankings now after that we tentatively are working on a project with Silver Sea for the month of June or July I'm not sure which yet uh, this is not confirmed it's on one of their newer ships We've done a lot of uh, Silver Sea reviews over the years. We've done most of the ships in their fleet, not all of them. We've done some of the ships in their fleet several times. So we have not seen this newest uh, Silver Nova class of ships. They hold more people, about 738 people, guests. And we're looking forward to experiencing that and hoping that we can bring you a full, detailed, in-depth report of one of those ships as well. A lot of our viewers and our followers on Facebook or through our website or blogs are very, very luxury-oriented. They're very expedition-oriented. A lot of people are interested in expedition cruising. That's why we're doing Swan Olenek. That's why we, we do put some focus on these brands. Now, there's also a lot of people out there interested in the newer large ships. And one of the most that we get the most requests for is information about this new Sun Princess from Princess Cruises. We have a great interest in covering that ship for our channel and for you guys, because we know you're interested in it. And we did not want to do we don't want to do it four or five days. We knew it was going to take time to cover all of the features, all of the venues, all of the dining options of that new large princess ship. So what we decided to do is just to go ahead and book a cruise on Sun Princess, uh, a longer cruise, not through their media department. We just did it on our own. And this will be a 16-night transatlantic cruise. We will be flying to Southam or to London and then uh, down, getting down to Southampton and getting on for 16 nights. This is not until September. This is the transatlantic when the ship comes from Europe over to the United States. And we also have had a lot of people asking for more information about their mini suites. These cabana mini suites have a lot of people, a lot of people have been asking for information on that. We decided to go ahead and book a cabana mini suite for that trip. And so we'll be able to tell you all about that experience in during that cruise and all, you know when we get back from the cruise. You know, a lot of these media people and YouTubers and influencers are rushing to get on that ship right now. We've been watching videos, you know, every night we watch cruise videos on YouTube. And the people that are on board right now, the journalists and the media people are kind of disappointed because a lot of things aren't ready yet. A lot of their, none of their entertainment is really up and going. The ship just isn't finished right now, quite frankly. 
a lot of the dining venues and, and opportunities aren't available right now. And I am so glad that we didn't uh, decide to go in on one of these early first two or three cruises because it would have been a waste of our time. We wouldn't be able to report to you what the ship has to offer. So in a sense, it's a blessing that we are doing our cruise in September. Hopefully by then, everything will be ironed out. The ship will be running smoothly. They'll have all the venues open and we will swoop in and we'll be able to give you every piece of information you need to know about the ship. Other projects are in the works, but nothing definite yet. So we'll keep you updated as those things become available. Okay, coming up here in just a second, we're going to do your comments, my reactions, or my answers to your questions. I'm not going to give you all the, the full name of everybody that posted these comments because sometimes these usernames are a little hard to pronounce or they have numbers in them and they're kind of confusing. But this is from Badminton. Uh, and this is on my Celebrity Apex review that we did, uh, I guess, a little over almost two years ago, maybe not quite two years ago. And they said, so am I only allowed to choose one starter and one entree at a MDR on the Edge class? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure what they're referring to here because she doesn't. He or she does not refer to the comment I made in the review. I don't know that that's a limitation. I don't know that you're limited to one. Certainly not one starter. There might be a restriction now on one entree. There may be an upcharge if you order a second entree on Celebrity. If anybody knows the answer to that, would you put it down in the comments? We haven't been on Celebrity in a year, so they may have changed their policy on that. This is on my dining review I did of Celebrity Beyond, which was about a little over a year ago. This is Mr. Chris. Mr. Chris. I'll just call him Mr. Chris. Did you ever explain why you're using air quotes around gratuity? I think in one of my videos or in that video, I must have said, you know, there's a gratuity charge like for drinks or something like that. Now, the reason I used air quotes is because to me, if something is added to your bill automatically, that's not a gratuity. That's just a charge. They call it a gratuity. Uh, now some cruise lines are actually changing the term to things like crew appreciation or whatever. Uh, but basically, it's an additional fee. It's another fee. Uh, to me, a gratuity is something that you, as the customer, give uh, on your own after having received service. It's not something you pay in advance or that you pay when you get the check. It's something you add. But that's just me. Uh, they've kind of changed the definition of what gratuity is now. So that's why I use the air quotes. Uh, this is David Stefan or Stephen. This is on our Viking Polaris review that we did this past uh, year. So kids would probably hate it. I'm asking because I'm planning a big family trip with 12 to 15 people, half our kids under 14. I, I don't think Viking even allows children under 18. So... No, this would not be the cruise for you. Viking Viking Cruises does not, they're pretty much an adult. It is an adult-only cruise line. So that you're correct about that. That's not the cruise line for you. Steve Roth, this was on my review of Princess's Sanctuary. Can't wait to see the Sanctuary on the new Sun Princess, because we love the Sanctuary. It's one of our favorite features on a Princess ship, so I'm really excited to see that and review it for you. And the question is, can this be reserved before you board the ship? It looks very interesting. Uh, Steve, Not it wasn't up until the last cruise we went on, you could not pre-book the Sanctuary. One of the first things Ricky and I do once we get on board the ship we drop our luggage in the stateroom, we head straight up to the sanctuary, and we book our sanctuary stays right then. We don't wait, because it can fill up. And on this new Sun Princess holding 4,500 people, wouldn't surprise me, but it fills up pretty quick. Okay, Scott Land says, this is on our food review of the Virgin Voyages, Scarlet Lady. 
says, just a simply fantastic review. I can't quite believe I haven't stumbled upon you folks before. Now I need to catch up. What an amazing cruise resource team. Well, thank you, Scott. That's much appreciated. It's always nice to hear good things. And I will say that most of the comments we get are nice, and people are usually pretty good to us on that. Another one on the Virgin Voyages review from William says, Your best video so far. Thank you. Well, that was one of the more recent videos, and I hope we're getting better as time goes on. We continue to invest in new equipment, video and audio. Uh, I'm still trying to get Ricky to get more camera time. She's more back, you know, take notes, uh, edit my videos, make sure everything's right. Uh, but we'll try to get her, maybe in on Swan Hellenic, we'll get her to be on camera a little bit. And Paul Smith, this is on our review of the MSC, I believe this was the Seashore? Yes, MSC Seashore. This was another one of those three-day things where they invited us. Um, but the question is, are the walls magnetic? All cruise ships that we've been on have metal walls. They're basically constructed almost like a shipping container. I mean, these are modu uh, modular and they're, you know, if you've ever seen how a cruise ship is built, they're all metal. They don't use any wood. Uh, it just wouldn't work. But uh, they, yes, all of the walls are, for the most part, are usually some sort of metal material. So they're not magnetic themselves, but you can stick magnets to them. So they are a, of a metal that you can stick a magnet to. So yes. Because we always take magnetic hooks with us. We always want extra space on the wall to hang like our caps and things like that. Sometimes our gear, backpacks, things like that. So and we have some really good, strong magnetic hooks that we take with us on every cruise. And we just put them on the wall or sometimes we'll put them on the back of the door because the doors are metal also. Uh, I'll put links in the description of this video to those hooks if you're interested. You get them on Amazon. They're really cheap and they work great. Uh, Lux Traveler, this was on my Celebrity Apex food review, said Celebrity has the best food, hands down. We've been on 26 cruises and Celebrity beats them all. Well, I would say, Lux Traveler, that We've been on 144 cruises, 43 different cruise lines, and I would say that Celebrity certainly is in the top. I'd say in the top five, at least, when it comes to food. I think Virgin is giving them a run for their money, though, on food. Virgin, pretty good food. But we, we've always, we've always uh, enjoyed the food on Celebrity, so I would tend to agree with you. Okay, this is from Alan... I'll just say Alan, and this is on our food review of Discovery Princess. This is a couple of summers ago. My wife and I are non-drinkers. We find that most specials, like the Ultimate Balcony Breakfast, include some alcoholic beverage. If you stay in a certain level suite, they give you a bottle of champagne. Drink packages are typically only a good value for drinkers. Do any cruise lines take into account that not all passengers drink but most reports I've seen is that more people are drinking less, not all. Are there any special deals for non-drinkers? Don't buy the drink package. That's the deal. I mean, if you don't, if you don't buy the drink package, you're not paying for those drinks that you're not getting. Now, if you go on a cruise line that is all inclusive, truly all inclusive, like Silver Sea or Regent or one of these where they do include drinks. Um, I've heard it argued some people that are not drinkers say, I don't want to be paying for other people's drinks. Uh, and I don't know if that's a great argument. I don't know if I agree with that. And I'll give you another example. Let's say you're a vegetarian. A lot of people go on cruises, they're vegetarians. Well, you're paying for other people's meat, whether you're eating it or not. So you could make the same argument. Do you really, I mean, if you're going to pay for other people's meat that I'm eating, because I'm a meat eater, yeah, if Carnival was doing all-inclusive and paying for people's drinks, then it would be probably a significant cost, because a lot of people go on Carnival to drink and party and have a good time. Okay, 
Let's move on to, I think this is the same Alan we talked to before, on the Princess, Discovery Princess dining review we did. And Alan says, my wife and I would wear the disposable gloves at the marketplace, which is their buffet. And I think in that video, I mentioned that Princess was still having you self-serve. You go up and get the food yourself. And Ricky and I have always been a little grossed out by the, picking up some utensils that 200, 300 other people have already touched. And one of my suggestions was, why don't they put disposable gloves, little plastic gloves that you could slip on and you could grab the utensils, serve yourself, and then throw the glove away at the end of the serving line. Uh, a lot of places do this. A lot of hotels do it. Uh, I know American Airlines Admirals Club does it. So it is doable. Yes, it's an additional expense, and cruise lines have this aversion now to plastic because they've bought into this whole... Anyway, I'm not going to get into that on this video. But nevertheless, uh, there is someone like ourselves that would use those plastic gloves, and I'd be more likely to go to the buffet. I don't really like serving myself at the buffet. I do understand from what I've heard that on Sun Princess, the crew is serving the guests, which I really like. And I don't know if that's something Princess is going to do fleet wide, but it certainly is a more sanitary way to deliver food. I can guarantee you that. Okay. Uh, this question comes from our Crystal Serenity food review we did a few months ago. And... Uh, he or she says, I really appreciate your effort to be objective, mentioning the negatives along with the positives, even as a guest of Crystal. Yes, we were invited guests at Crystal, but we have always had a policy of telling it like it is. If there's something we find that we feel like is worth mentioning that could be construed as I don't want to say negative, but maybe something that needs to be improved. If it's negative, then it is negative. Uh, we'll mention it. Now, there are cruise lines that we have reviewed that after we post the review, they've never invited us again, and they will not respond to our requests. Maybe that's because we mentioned something to you that we thought needed to be addressed or something that wasn't 100% positive. That's not really just, that's just not the way we work. And we have enough cruise lines to work with where it's no big deal to us. Uh, Kenneth Preston says, this is on our Crystal Cruise Review, Crystal Serenity Ship Review. He says, receiving free accommodations and services from a cruise line is a payment in kind from a cruise line. The fact that you did not pay for your accommodations probably should be noted up front so the listener can ascertain the degree of unbiased reporting in the video. Okay, this, this really brings up a much broader question of if somebody, if a journalist gets a cruise complimentary, can you really trust the review? Are they, are they really being objective, which I think is what he's saying, or he says unbiased. You have to think of it in a little bit different terms from the time we step on board that ship until the time we step off the ship we're working we're shooting video we're shooting photos we're interviewing people we are taking lots of notes i'm usually up early anyway i'm usually up at five o'clock in the morning and you'll find me usually down in the coffee shop with my laptop, and I'm going through the sometimes several hundred photos that I've taken from the day before, not to mention however many minutes or hours of video that I've shot, and I'm trying to catalog all this. I'm writing a blog for that day for our website, and so we're we're working. We're not there. Now, we now we enjoy it. I'm not saying we don't enjoy the, the experience. We do. That's why we got into this, because we like cruising. We enjoy it. But we are there to primarily to serve a function of bringing you information. I think the way we look at it and the way the cruise line looks at it, it's not a payment. 
there's an exchange occurring because we are giving something in return. We're not giving them money, but we're giving them exposure on our YouTube channel, through our blog. They are getting something in return for that stateroom. Also remember, uh, when we are a guest of a cruise line, we don't get to pick our stateroom. We don't get to pick a lot of the things that we do. And a lot of times the extra things like uh, specialty dining or in some cases our drinks and uh, gratuities, a lot of times these things are extra that we have to pay for out of pocket. So uh, occasionally we'll get sponsors that will pick up the bulk of that cost because there's no way we can afford to maintain a YouTube channel and go on 8 or 10 or 12 cruises a year, flying internationally and doing all the things we have to do. And generally speaking, some cruise lines pick up the cost of our airfare, some don't. Uh, some partially pick it up. It just depends. So there are expenses involved other than just the cruise itself. And the question is, can you trust a review uh, under those circumstances from a journalist? Well, uh, you have to make that decision for yourself. I would suggest that just because somebody paid for a cruise does not automatically mean you can trust them being unbiased. So just because somebody pays for a cruise doesn't necessarily mean they're being unbiased. Mm -hmm. The question, I think, gets down to trust. Who do you trust? Who do you listen to and believe? And it I wouldn't trust anybody. I wouldn't trust me. I wouldn't trust Gary Bembridge. I wouldn't trust, you know, Ben and David. I wouldn't trust any of it. Emma, I listen to everybody. You need to get a, a, a breadth of information from a variety of sources and find people on YouTube or wherever that you relate to. And, you know, I for example, I don't relate that much with Emma. She's a young and oftentimes uh, cruises as a single woman. So it's hard for me to really relate to her. She's much younger than we are. and But I, I still get value from her input and from her information. I tend to relate more with Gary Bembridge. He's more in our age range. He, I think, tends to enjoy the things we enjoy uh, more than some of the other cruisers out there. You just have to find people that you trust. It doesn't matter whether they've paid for the cruise or whether they got it uh, as part of working with the cruise line as a journalist. Like I say, I don't trust anything. I wouldn't advise you just to listen to somebody blindly and trust it. Just take what you can from it, and hopefully you'll get benefit from that. Okay, enough on that. Regent versus Crystal. Which is better, in your opinion, for an Alaska cruise? No idea. I've never been to Alaska. I wouldn't, I wouldn't comment on that because I haven't been to Alaska on either one. I don't think, I don't think you'd be disappointed with either one. They're both great cruise lines. Regent's a great cruise line. Crystal's a great cruise line. I think I'd, I'd look for the best deal, uh, the itinerary you like, best accommodations, whatever suits your style. Uh, like I say, I, think, I, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. Viking Polaris review uh, question was, thank you for the very thorough recap. Is there any kind of regular entertainment in the evening? Now, this is Viking Polaris, which is an expedition ship. One of their two expedition ships, or are there three? There might be a third one now. I can't remember. Um, they're smaller ships. They don't have shows. They don't have a theater. Well, they kind of have a theater at the back of the ship. A beautiful uh, space, by the way, primarily used for... Uh, expedition uh, lectures and you know getting you ready for the next day's activities but they will two or three times during our cruise they did have some entertainment like local entertainers that came on I think we had a cruise director that sang one night in that venue in the lounge uh, they have uh, like a little threesome playing music every night it's, but it's not entertainment focused. The entertainment on a Viking expedition is going to be the destination. That's your entertainment. But they do have other things going on in the evenings, but it's, it's much quieter than you would find on a normal uh, 
I say normal, a more traditional type cruise. Okay, Steve says, this is by far the best Mardi Gras food review. We've been trying to get on Jubilee since it sails out of Texas because we're in Texas. And uh, man, all the all the cruises are full. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. That thing's selling out. And we were very, very impressed with the food on Carnival Mardi Gras. But uh, there were some issues. There were a couple of little issues. But if you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's, it's a good, it is a good video. And we were very impressed with the food on Carnival. Okay, this is on our Virgin Voyages. Super review, no bullshit, unlike some YouTubers. Okay, well, say it like it is. Thank you, I guess. <laughs> uh, this is another one on our Princess Food Review. From Gary, he says, I'm kind of surprised that professional cruise reviewers would be so squeamish about eating at the buffet. I think I replied to his comment by saying, that's exactly why we are squeamish about eating at the buffet. We've been on a lot of cruises where people get norovirus or they get other stomach viruses and things. And, you know, I am convinced that the majority of that comes from the buffet and from lots of people handling those utensils. Don Pomeroy just tells it like it is. He cut right to the chase. This is on my Holland America cruise review from a couple of years ago. He just said, this guy's an idiot. I think he's referring to me. Okay, well, you be the judge. Oh, uh, let's see. Rhonda Lynn says, what a wonderful... This is on uh, another Virgin Voyages food review comment. What a wonderful review. I have never been on a cruise, but you have convinced me that my first cruise should be on Virgin, and I hope it will be soon. Fantastic video. Rhonda, thank you for those kind words. I'm going to make that the last comment. I, I don't know how we could end it any better. And I don't think you could go wrong. I think you're going to love it. If you, if you do go on Virgin as your first cruise, I think you'll have a good time. Uh, we were certainly surprised. We didn't know what to expect. We'd been wanting to go on Virgin for a couple of years, and it just the opportunity just never presented itself. And when it did, we jumped on it, and we're glad we did. We look forward to going back on Virgin on a longer cruise because there's a lot of, there, even on in five days, there was a lot of stuff we didn't really get to cover thoroughly enough. And we want to go back and get some of that information, that coverage that we didn't quite get the first time. So hopefully this year, maybe we can get back on another Virgin voyage because we were very very impressed, and it is a very different experience from other cruise lines. So I'm going to end it with that. Thanks, everybody, for joining me today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget that. And uh, we'll be talking to you as more develops on our Swan Hellenic Cruise. I'll let you know more about what's going to go on maybe with Silver Sea in the summer and anything else that may come up in the meantime. we got several irons in the fire we're working on. So until I see you the next time, smooth sailing.